everyone, this is Erin in the forest at Minglewood Farm and Nature Preserve. Thank you so much for joining us on our virtual field trip from seeds to plants. When a seed enters the soil, it sprouts the necessary plant parts that it needs in order to grow and reproduce. Reproduce means making more of yourself. Plants are incredibly important. Humans and animals eat plants to gain the energy they need to survive. As people, we rely on plants for providing building materials for homes, and wild animals rely on plants for shelter, like nest cavities and burrows. Before a plant can successfully grow, the seed must find its way into a suitable habitat. For example, have you ever seen a large tree growing by itself in a field and wondered, how did it get there? Its seed was transported there by a process called seed dispersal. Dispersal means moving from one place to another. Seed dispersal allows plants to reach specific habitats that are favorable for survival. Take the seeds of the rattlesnake plantain plant, for example. After the plant blooms and the flowering rosette dies, a fruit capsule emerges containing numerous tiny lightweight seeds that are dispersed by the wind. The rattlesnake plantain gets its name because the seed capsules look like a snake rattle. If the plantain seeds aren't dispersed far enough by the wind, the seeds will grow too closely together and have to compete for light, water, and nutrients from the soil. Seed dispersal allows plants to spread out from a wide area and avoid competing with one another for the same resources. To learn more about seed dispersal, let's check in with Farmer Bill. As we have seen, plants come in various shapes and sizes and have different requirements for growth. And the same holds true with seeds. They come in various shapes and sizes and they have different means of getting around and being dispersed. Some cases animals help with the dispersal, in other cases wind and water. In this case right here, this is a sumac berry. Birds love sumac berries. These happen in the fall and the birds will eat these and of course they'll go through their digestive system and they will poop them out and those seeds will still be viable and they will still grow. So the birds help spread the seed out of the sumac. Tick seeds like the beggar tick are known for numerous seeds with hook barbs that attach onto clothing and fur, allowing the seeds to be dispersed widely. Here I have acorns, which of course are the seeds for the mighty oak trees that we have. And one of the ways that they get dispersed is by chipmunks and squirrels. Now squirrels will actually go up in the trees and get these acorns, and they in their own mind will bury them for the winter time, hopefully for later on when they need them. But actually they forget sometimes, and these acorns will grow into a tree. Another one of my favorites is the common sunflower seed. As you can see the great pattern that it shows when it's, when it's growing. This was collected last fall, and I will take these seeds out, and I will plant them again so all these seeds will grow a whole nother sunflower plant so I have thousands of plants just from this one seed head. Another one of course is the pine cones and a lot of times people don't realize where the seed is on the pine cone but it is it's on the very tip and that is the seed a lot of times this can be dispersed by animals they can eat this and take it and have it planted birds squirrels but another favorite of mine. Here we have a black walnut, and this is actually a seed, although the seed itself is way in the inside and covered by two layers of shell. These are actually, gravity is what helps put these in the ground. They fall off the tree and get into the soil. And of course, you wouldn't want to be hit by one of these because they are actually very big. Here's a seed that I found when I was hiking up in the Hudson Valley. When I saw it, I couldn't believe it was actually a seed that I didn't know what it was. I brought it back to North Carolina, and for years, I did not know what this was. Until finally, I asked a friend, and he told me that it came from overseas. This was a, a plant that grows in Asia and Africa, and it has gotten to the Hudson Valley by people planting it, inadvertently not knowing that it could be an invasive species. It's very unusual seed in that it's very hard, almost feels like plastic. So the strategy of this plant for reproduction was to have its seed be able to float in different places and then to be planted wherever it got to. 
And this has been extremely successful. In fact, in the Northeast, it's become an invasive species and has to be eradicated. But it actually is a very successful strategy for this plant. Here I have some milkweed seed. And this is a fine example of a seed that gets dispersed by the wind. As you can see, these things are the seed itself is the little seed. And these are all things that help disperse it. So when the wind blows, they can travel a very great distance with the help of the wind and get planted in different areas. These seeds might fall into a better place for it to grow, maybe less competition, maybe they'll have more nutrients in the soil. So this is a great strategy, strategy for this plant to disperse its seeds and to reproduce. Some plants like maple trees have wing seeds, which are an adaptation well suited for wind dispersal. These seeds will be blown around by the wind, hopefully landing in a favorable growing environment. Producing many seeds helps increase their chances for survival. I'd like to show you some of my favorite seeds that I collect. One of them is cotton. Now this is the cotton. We collect the seed every year, and as you can see, the seed is in the fluff of the cotton. That is one cotton seed. The cotton, when it's first growing, when it first dries, it's not open. The shell is tightly closed. But after a while, through temperature and water, they open up slowly but surely until gradually they're completely open and it's easy to get the cotton out. Now, of course, we know we make cotton. The shirts we're wearing, most of them are made out of cotton, so it's a very important crop. I love growing it also. Some seeds are ejected explosively. Plants like peas have seed pods that dry out once they are ripe. Once dry, the pods split open and the seeds are ejected. Another example is the vegetable okra, which is a plant that shoots seeds when it's touched, projecting the seeds several feet. As a farmer, collecting seed is very important to me. I collect seeds of my fruits, vegetables, flowers. Right here is an example of flowers that I collect. This is an iron weed. It's a beautiful purple flower that flowers in the fall, draws butterflies, hummingbirds, and bees. It's a great pollinator attractor. And in it, I collect these seeds. You can see that these are the old dried flowers. And each one of these has hundreds of seeds. So I collect them. I just snip them carefully. And I will add them to my collection to be planted. I love planting native plants. This is a plant that grows here wild. It's a great draw for everything that I want to attract to my farm for the pollinators. Thank you for letting me show you my seed collection. Seeds are very important to me, as you can see. Um, gosh, you see all the different kinds, the different shapes. And I have plenty of fun trading these seeds with other people. Some of these seeds were given to me because people wanted me to grow the plant. They know I love plants. So a lot of people will share their seeds with me, and I love that. And I love to share my seeds with them. Seed collecting is a free activity. It doesn't cost any money. So it's just a great thing, and it really helps me as a farmer. For hundreds of millions of years, seeds have found an interesting way of finding their way into the soil. Once the seed has been dispersed, it's buried in the ground and soil. All seeds have life in them. Take a look at this wild geranium, for example. Seeds contain a plant with leaves, a stem, and roots. The main requirements to trigger a seed to grow are soil, water, sunshine, and carbon dioxide, which is a gas in the air. As the plant grows, its stem bursts through the soil, growing up towards the sunlight. The roots will grow down in the soil. Then leaves start to unfold and sprout from the stem. Leaves take in sunlight and will produce food through a process called photosynthesis. Eventually, a plant's buds grow and sprout into flowers. Take this wild ginger for example. You can see how it gets its nickname Little Brown Jug because the blooms are starting to appear. Many plants produce flowers that are very important in making seeds. Take the state flower of North Carolina for example, the dogwood. The dogwood makes brilliantly bright red seeds that birds and other wildlife love to eat. Let's check in with Farmer Bill and the Strawberry Patch to learn more. Now here's a good example of a flower that turns into a fruit. This is our strawberry plants, and of course these flower early in the spring. Later on they become little green berries, 
that hopefully will ripen into these luscious juicy berries. Honeybees and wild bees are the best pollinators for strawberries. Flowers are pollinated when pollen from the stamen is moved into the pistil of the flower. Seeds and fruit are produced. Many animals like to eat the fruit off of plants just the same way that people do. Seeds use different means of dispersal and the life cycle starts all over again. Thank you for joining us on our virtual field trip from seeds to plants. Today we learned about seed dispersal and the life cycle of plants. I hope you find time to get out and enjoy the natural world around us. Now let's check for understanding.